Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we're going to do a small piece of paper birch. This is another piece that Valerie brought to me. If you're not familiar with paper birch, it gets its name from the bark. The bark peels off just like paper, just thin as paper. And it sheds its bark all during its life, as far as I know. I'm not an expert on it. It just keeps coming off. Just keeps coming. Now this over here appears to be quite sound. I don't know if that's because it hasn't dried yet. I don't I really don't know. I don't know that much about it. I've I've worked with it before, but I think in that case when I used it before I uh I didn't leave any of the bark on. That's not the case today. I do intend to leave the bark on. This is going to be a live edge piece. I found the center and drilled a hole for my woodworm screw. I am going to leave the four corners intact. It's just small. It's about six inches by seven inches. It has some natural holes in it. I, those are not bug holes. All birch has those. I'm not sure what causes them or where they come from or why or what the point is. The piece looks basically sound. I don't see any cracks at all. The pith is present, but I think uh, that will be gone once I flatten out the bottom. It's about two and a quarter, two and a half inches in thickness. So let me get this mounted up on the woodworm screw and we're going to get to turning. We're going to be turning at about 740 RPM, mask and face shield on. Now what I had in mind to do here is uh, kind of give the, the bottom a kind of an upswept look. Not a lot, but uh, maybe I'm going to have to do more than I had in mind here. So I think it's going to look funny with these flat square ends and then tapered down here. So I might have to come way up. Maybe that idea is just not going to work on this piece. It is 6 by 7 so it's not square. And under here I see more bark. Can you see that? There's more regular white bark under there. So I'll probably end up peeling all this off. And I'm not sure how I intend to keep the bark on. I may end up spraying it with some, some kind of finish. I don't know. I guess we'll go with the recess. So I'm going to remove the tailstock here. I do have this recess tool that I bought with uh, when I bought this chuck. It was a, my first chuck ever. And I thought I needed a recess tool. And so I bought it. Of course you don't need one. But I have it. I paid money for it. I'm going to use it. And you probably know, but you don't always have to remove this little button in the middle here. Sometimes it's nice to leave it as a little decorative element. And that's what I'm going to do this time. 
all you need is room for your chuck jaws to sit down flat and expand into this uh, recess. This is a my jaws are dovetail jaws and this is a dovetail recess tool. You just you just press it in there straight in and over and that creates a little little bit of a dovetail. Doesn't take much. Just want to clean up this area here a little bit. Just using it as a scraper now. I usually remove the recess just the same way that I remove a tenon, but sometimes I end up leaving it so I want it to be somewhat attractive. Yeah, that should do it. Let me do a little sanding on the uh, bottom here and then we'll turn it around or put a finish on it or something. Well, sometimes that happens, hardly ever. That comes from not keeping it tilted downward, getting it up here too high. And it'll peel that right off. So I'll work at this for, uh, well, as long as it takes me. 45 minutes or so. I'm starting with 80 grit and I'll work up through 400. I haven't decided about these ends yet if I even want to sand them at all. They're just chainsaw cuts and there's some texture there and I kind of like that texture. It's not awful. They are good straight cuts. So I might leave that or I might sand it with this or more likely I'll sand it with my uh, Sandoflex sander that I like to use just to kind of smooth them out but leave the texture and I'll bring you back when it's time to put a finish on here or sanding sealer or who knows what I don't later well I decided to go with sanding sealer because this uh, smoothed up real nice that's one thing you can say about birch. It's real tight grain, real hard, and uh, sands up beautifully. So I'll put uh, two coats of sanding sealer on, then decide what kind of finish. I'm thinking I'm gonna spray this with some kind of top coat. Not sure what exactly. But when I, uh, the, the reason I'm decided I might want to spray it, and I'm not certain yet, but probably, is uh, just as an effort to seal up the bark so that it will quit peeling once once this is all finished. And I think it would be difficult to put it on any other way. I'll probably go with polyurethane. But I'll put two coats of this on here. We'll turn it around, hollow out the bowl part and then decide on a, a finish for there and whatever that is is what I'll do on the bottom. So when this is ready to turn around I'll see you back here. Well I have a decision to make. I've got uh, two coats of uh, sanding sealer on here now and steel wool in between coats and it's quite nice, quite smooth. But in sanding I've reduced the depth of my uh, recess. It's probably not much more than a sixteenth of an inch if if it's that. And I typically shoot for an eighth of an inch. So either I could make it deeper now and mess up my nice finish I have on here or I can see if it'll hold. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll get this off of here off the woodworm screw and see if uh, it's deep enough to remain stable in the chuck. And like I always do, I like to bring up my tailstock and drive this into the chuck so that I know that it's well seated. Loosen the chuck up, drive it in there 
and then tighten the jaws. I'm pulling pretty hard here and wiggling. I think it's going to hold. And you know, this is such a small piece. I could I could have tailstock support for a short time, not long. I guess I will. Why tempt fate, right? Okay, I think we are ready to go. Let me get my mask and face shield on and sharpen up a bowl gouge and we'll get to turning. Now in the beginning I said this was going to be a live edge piece. And uh, to be clear, to me what a live edge is, is bark on. That's a live edge. To me, a natural edge is uh, bark off or mostly off. The bark isn't the focal point as I want it to be in this one. But still the edge is natural. So the bark is all peeled off but you're, but you're leaving a natural edge. That's how I determine the difference. And there's, there's more of that paper bark I've been talking about. It, it just keeps coming but I'm hoping to get to a point where it'll stop. I also, you know, want to leave as much of nature in this piece as I can. If I hold my chisel over here and touch this edge, you can see it touches there. It doesn't touch over here at all because this is so low. And even though this is the wider portion, this is seven inches this way, and this way it's six inches. Um, if I if I come in here at this point, I'm going to have an oval shape, and it'll be an oval shape the short way, six inches instead of seven inches. If I keep on going down into this area, I'll end up with an oval shape in the long direction. By by coming in here, I would end up taking down these tall ends, which might be desirable. I kind of like that idea. But what I'm going to do is just sneak up on it. I'm just going to I'm going to come in here and come out further and further and further and stop the lathe often and and just see what I'm getting. I don't want to make a determination right now. So uh, I've sharpened up my half inch bowl gouge. Typically I use the 5 eighths, but because this is a smaller piece, I'm going to go with half inch. We're going to be turning at about 700 RPM. Mask and face shield on. See, we're getting a, an oval shape here already. And I'm already out to this edge. Nowhere near this edge. Uh, but that'll be a mighty small bowl if I stick with what I'm doing here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and remove this edge. You know, sometimes odd is good. Sometimes not. I'm debating if I want to go ahead and take this out of here as well. I'm imagining uh, maybe a change dish. And you put your change in there and then you can scoop it out this way. Oh well, let's see. I think we'll keep coming out here further. Which means it's going to come out here further. I may lose that bark, but that's okay. There's going to be plenty over here and plenty over here. Still going to be a live edge. Well, I'm probably going to have to get rid of this tail stock because I can't really get in there very well. Look at those nice curls coming off of there. See if I can speed it up any now. That is about 850.
Well, if I keep going, I'm going to have a tray here in a minute, aren't I? <laughs> I did get these ends down, and I'm, I'm glad I did. Still working on these corners and the bottom thickness, but it's getting down there. Maybe I'll just measure. I have to remember I'm coming up in there about an eighth of an inch. Currently I'm at about a quarter of an inch thick bottom. About three eighths of an inch out here in the corner. So if I'm at a quarter inch bottom and I'm coming up, well I, I guess I'm not coming an eighth, I'm more like a sixteenth. So I better start thinking about uh, finishing this off. In fact, maybe I should scrape because I'm, I'm pretty much to the shape that I'm going to be. Whatever shape that is, who knows. Scraper it is. Stand by for sanding. I've decided to start sanding with my Sandal Flex uh, because I want to round up these corners. I don't want those to be sharp and they are pretty sharp. I have to be careful. I don't want to hurt this though. Maybe I, I was going to do it while it was turning. Maybe I'll do it while it's not turning. Let me get my mask on here. Much better, much better. Now I'll do the rest of this with a two inch sanding disc. And we'll start in reverse. And I'll alternate between reverse and forward. What you have to remember is when it's spinning this way, if you're working over here, you got to keep your pad tipped up so that it only catches the, the back end. You don't want it to catch the, the leading edge. You know, that wouldn't be good. So it's got to be up like this so that it can get by there. It's just a matter of practice. Sometimes I sand over here, sometimes I sand over here. Just just depends on which way you're going. You have to think about that continuously. And you want your pad rotating against the direction of rotation. So this is spinning this way, the pad's spinning against it. And that just, that just allows it to be more aggressive. It just speeds up the sanding is all. I don't know that it does a better job. It just takes less time. So this is 80 grit and I'll work up through 400. And I'll be back when it's time to put some, uh, who knows what, sanding sealer, I guess, on there. See you in a bit. Well, I've decided not to spray this. I was certain that's what I was going to do. But I've been picking and peeling at the bark until I believe I have all of the loose stuff gone. So I'm just going to put sanding sealer right on the bark here. And these two ends that are unfinished that are uh, not turned, that have chainsaw marks. I smoothed them out just lightly with sandpaper. And I'll show it to you when it's all done here. But I like the texture of that. If you didn't know it was a chainsaw mark, you wouldn't know it was a chainsaw mark. And you wouldn't say, oh my God, that's ugly. You, you feel it and it just feels pretty nice. So I will put on two coats of this sanding sealer and then I'll uh, put shellac on over it. This is a shellac based sanding sealer, but you can use anything over it that you want to. 
but I like this shellac pretty well. So that's the first coat. I'll let that dry for a half an hour or so. Come out here and smooth it out with uh, steel wool. Put on another coat and then the shellac. And we'll call it good. So I'll see you back here in just a little bit. I'm back and I think we're done. Typically uh, I would remove the recess and I think I said I was going to remove the recess. But let's take a look at it. That's the recess. It's less than a sixteenth of an inch deep. You can barely even catch your fingernail on there. And I don't know that what I might do would improve it. I have another one here. This is a changed dish I did uh, a few videos back, a few months back. And on this one I did remove the recess. But I'm not sure that that's an improvement over this. The reason I removed them is I like to say that you can't tell how I held this piece. However, probably most people that are watching this video are wood turners and they would know how I held it. So I guess that's who I'm trying to please. Uh, my wife says, what's the difference? She says it just looks like a decoration, just like you just put a decoration on there. Leaving the recess doesn't look any better than removing the recess. So in this case, because it is so shallow, I think I might agree with her. So it's done. So now another thing I would say about this is, no, I didn't set out to make a change dish. I set out to make a bowl. But along the way, I knew that I wanted to uh, reduce the size of those square cuts on the ends. I knew I wanted to bring them down. They used to sit clear up here. So in bringing those down, I ended up with a change dish instead of a bowl. And that's okay. I think it looks better this way than had I left those so prominent the way they were. And maybe you can see the lift I was talking about that I tried to give this. So when it sits flat, it actually lifts up off of, the, off of the table. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like this video, thumbs up please, I'd appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for that. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. It's, uh, it's important to me. It's not life and death, but I enjoy sharing what I do with you. If you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming one. I put out regular videos, about one a week, and I'd like to stay in touch. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.